Hey there friends and welcome to another video. If you're new to this channel and this is your first time seeing one of my videos, hi there, thanks for joining. My name is Rowan, I'm 15 and I use they them pronouns. Alright, so the topic of today's video is what it's like to be LGBTQ plus when you're in high school. So the first section of this video is going to be more of just like a general thing, while later in the video I'm going to be talking about some more trans related specific stuff. Because like, I myself identify as trans non-binary. Some people who identify as non-binary will identify as transgender, others won't. I'm one of the people who do. My experiences don't define those of everyone in high school who is queer to some degree. But I just think that sharing what has helped me will be able to possibly help other people. So if you want to skip to the trans part of the video, then I will put the time right here that you should skip to. And here we go. The first thing that I want to talk about is finding a support network. So a support network is going to be people like teachers and friends who are going to be around you and are the people who make you feel most comfortable and like you can just be you. For me, my support network is pretty much made up of my sibling who is graduating or who graduated and is now going to university, but we're still going to text a lot. And then my friends. So my friends have always been there supporting me, especially through middle school when I was still figuring stuff out. It was around eighth grade when I started first questioning my sexuality, which that led into gender stuff. And it was especially throughout this past school year that I've been figuring out like who I am, how I want to identify, and how I want to be referred to as. Your support network is going to be the people you can be unapologetically yourself around. So the people who won't judge you at all for just existing as you and who are going to cheer you on no matter what. So for me, those people are friends that I've made this past year and they're amazing. They try their best to use my pronouns and they just love and support me and that's the most that I can ever ask for. It does kind of help that like most of them are like queer to some degree, like a couple of them are bi gender queer or trans and some of them are just amazing allies but part of it is without these people around me supporting me this wouldn't be possible I wouldn't have the courage or the confidence to be able to put myself out there like on the internet saying hey this is who I am so find a network of people around you who love and support you and are willing to just stay by your side even through thick and thin because oftentimes when you're like a teenager going through high school and you are queer, you may face some sort of hardships, whether it be losing relationships because of who you are or just trying to get more comfortable in your own skin. Having these people around you is going to make that so much easier. So tip number one, get a support network. Find the people who love you for you. Tip number two is maybe, like, join your school's GSA or the equivalent. So, like, at my school, we have a GSA, but rather than calling it the Gay Straight Alliance, it's Genders and Sexualities, so it's a bit more inclusive sounding. And even if your school doesn't have one, you could be the person to start one. Like, I have an internet friend who lives over in the UK, and they started a GSA at their school because there hadn't been one previously. And I thought that that was really amazing. So a GSA is basically a safe space for like queer kids in your school to gather. When I first walked into my school's GSA back in September of ninth grade, right now it's summertime and I'm going to 10th grade, so it's almost a year ago, I just remember stepping in, there was a rainbow flag just hanging in the advisor's classroom, and that was one of the most open things that I've ever seen, and I just... I kind of loved it, because it's just like, this is a place where you can be yourself. And like for our first meeting, everyone went around, said their name, preferred pronouns, and favorite color. And I thought that that was really cool, because it's kind of instilling this thing where it's like, saying your pronouns should just be a normal thing. Like, hi, I'm Rowan and I use they, them pronouns, because oftentimes people will just assume. But by normalizing it in an environment such as that, by saying, hey, these are my pronouns, what are yours? That made it feel like a very safe space. So try to join a GSA or the equivalent, or maybe start it up. 
because that's going to be the easiest way to find other kids who maybe you can connect to, or if you just want to kind of join your school's local queer community, then that would be a good place to start. Tip number three is kind of similar to tip number two, but also a bit different. So tip number three is just try to get involved in something in general. So this can also relate back to finding your support network. Just try to get involved in your school's community, whether it be sports, clubs, or theater. I'm involved in the theater scene at my school, so I don't really go on stage. I did in middle school, but I found that backstage is a much better fit for me. So something interesting at my school is for tech crew and GSA, there's quite a bit of overlap. So a good amount of people on tech crew are queer to some degree. And that was a pretty interesting thing, because I wasn't expecting that. It's like, we all just kind of meshed together, asked each, other <laughs> asked each other's pronouns, and it was a really cool, inclusive environment. Plus, the people I met on Tech Crew are now some of my closest friends, because you bond together as you're, like, screwing together pieces of wood, painting sets until 10 o'clock at night sometimes. Tech Crew is a great experience for me. Tech Crew may be different at other schools. Well, Tech Crew will be different at other schools. But the point is just finding, even if it's not like a GSA, it's still like finding your community and finding places where you want to be. Like at my school, we have a whole bunch of different clubs, like Dungeons and Dragons, GSA, Students for Peace and Survival, Amnesty International, Political Club, Debate Club. There are so many ways that you can get involved, and we have a whole bunch of sports teams. And some of the nice things about that is you're finding people who you can probably find a common interest with, rather than just going out and saying, hey, who wants to be my friend? It might be a bit less awkward because you'll have something to talk about. Because I know with me, finding friends is sometimes a bit difficult. Because if you haven't been able to tell, I'm quite awkward. But getting involved definitely helped me to become friends with some of the people that I am friends with now. This is a big one. Don't ever feel pressured to come out. I know that oftentimes people are like, it's high school. I'm going to come out and it's going to be great. If you're in a more conservative area, sometimes a rural areas or urban areas or wherever, and you want to come out, then that's great. And I'd say do it. If you're in a liberal area, conservative, wherever, if you want to come out and you feel like you're going to be safe and it's going to make you more comfortable, then do it all the way. But if someone like your friends or maybe a partner is pressuring you saying, hey, just come out already. Just do it. Just do it. Don't do it. Because if someone's pressuring you into coming out, then they're not your friend or they're not a good influence, at least. Coming out is your decision. It's part of what makes it kind of special, I guess. It's saying, hey, this is who I am, and it's my choice to tell you. It's supposed to be your choice when and where and who knows. Don't let anybody take that away from you. And if they do, then pardon my language, but they're an asshole. Sometimes people can't come out for many reasons, and the people around them just don't realize it. They're like... Oh, just come out already. It'll be fine. But friends or partners or whoever may not realize that there may be a homophobic sibling or parent at home or family member or it's just a bad environment to come out into that someone doesn't want to. You'll know when you're ready. So don't let anybody take that away from you. All right. So number five is letting go of toxic people and or toxic relationships. So oftentimes people go into high school thinking, all right, I'm going to make myself anew. And part of that can be letting go of the people around you who make you feel uncomfortable or feel unsafe. So part of that could be, say, you have friends who make like little microaggressions. Microaggressions are like things that could be like little comments. So it's hearing things like the bad F word. I don't mean the swear word, I mean the thing that gay people are sometimes called There's that, or the D word, or the T word. 
like those three are like the big three that's like you'd never call anyone in the queer community those because those are just bad if someone wants to label themselves as one of those and they're part of the queer community then ask ask them before t using those words but never just go up to someone and be like hey you're such a bleep because that is not okay and if people just like make little comments like oh my god he's such a Cut them out of your life. Because if they're making you feel uncomfortable and you can't say anything about it or you feel like they would get upset at you, they're not worth it. You're worth it, though. So please understand what your own limits are. Another thing is, like, toxic relationships. Those can be difficult to get out of sometimes. Because, say, your partner might be abusive or something. In high school, you can't really talk about it. But you can make the choice to talk about it. If you feel like you're being hurt, then please, oh my god, please say something. Abuse doesn't necessarily have to be physical, like being hit. It can also just be someone making little comments saying, you need me. You need me. You're nothing without me. No one else will ever love you. That is a toxic relationship at as a good example, just if someone's putting you down or doing little microaggressive things, then please cut them out of your life. You don't need that negativity in there. The world is negative enough as is. We don't need the people who we think are our friends or partners or people we care about. We don't need them slowly tearing us down bit by bit. Alrighty, so now we're going to move on to the kind of more like trans teens in high school section of the video and this is only my experience and kind of the experiences that I've heard from my friends at least at my school like I'm very lucky to live in a pretty liberal area so here we go so this somewhat ties to what I was talking about earlier with getting a support network so get a trusted adult and this applies to whether you're trans or just queer in general Finding a trusted adult is going to be something that will definitely help, especially if you're a trans student and say you want to go into the bathroom of your choice, but it's going to make you feel uncomfortable or you feel like another kid's going to yell at you or another kid has yelled at you. Go to your trusted adult, talk about it with them, because they'll probably have a better grasp of the school's rules and things that can or cannot be done in order to help you feel more comfortable. So definitely talk to someone, whether it's like a teacher, an aide, an administrator, or even your guidance counselor again. These are going to be the people who can help you make the biggest change in your school life. Alright, so it's important to talk to your friends and the people around you about what makes you comfortable or maybe triggers your dysphoria, because otherwise they won't know. So, like, I've known some people who are AFAB who, like, when someone goes in for a hug, it triggers their chest dysphoria. So that's something that you have to be mindful of. If someone goes in for a hug and you're AFAB and you're like, hey, or if you're AMAB, uh, that means assigned male at birth and assigned female at birth, for those of you who don't know. If someone, like, goes in for something like a hug, or maybe, like, touches your arm or something, and it makes you feel uncomfortable, you just have to be very blunt, I guess, and just be like, hey, this makes me uncomfortable, please don't do it in the future. And that will definitely help, I feel. Alright, so I know that there wasn't very much under the trans umbrella that I did talk about, but I think that everyone's experiences are going to be different, and we need to appreciate So if you have any tips for if you're a trans high schooler, then please put something in the comments down below. This is just a little bit of stuff that I've figured out as I've been going through based on my own experiences and my friends' experiences, and also... I hope that all these tips in general could help. And there are definitely a whole bunch of other videos on YouTube. So if you need other stuff, then just do something like a search, like being LGBTQ in high school or queer in high school. And a whole bunch of stuff is going to pop up. And I hope that they can all help you. So that's all for now. Subscribe if you so desire. I post queer stuff, life stuff, and like ukulele videos because that's a fun time. So, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a comment, give me some feedback, what you'd like to see in the future. And I'll see all you guys on the flip side.